when I experience anxiousness, worry, concern about the things of the world, he says, those are my concerns. I'm, I'm concerned for you. And look at the lilies, look at the birds, look how I take care of them. I'm, I'll take care of you. Why don't you come and trust me with them? Yeah. So what would it look like? Let's get, let's see if we can get some practicality around this. There's a prescription in this text. Okay. What does it look like to do that? It says, for the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them all. So he's, here's the prescription, verse 33 of, of chapter 6. You probably should memorize this. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. That's the prescription. Mm-hmm. So you want to combat anxiety? Seek the kingdom. You want to combat your worry? Live a little righteous life. Those are the prescriptions for because that centers you back onto the reality that God's in control, God's at the center, and God's the one who provides. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah, I think I think that is the right track. Let's let's see if we can put even more wheels on it. Because I think that one of the challenges would be if I asked you, I we'll ask somebody, we'll ask, you know, an audience member, um, question for you. What were your last activities and behaviors? where you sought the kingdom of God. I think people would often say, I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm. And so we say, hey, seek first the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all of these things will be added. Great. How do you do that? And I don't know if we could even, we don't, we don't have a clarity around that so that we could even look back in the last week or a month or a year and say, I can identify these actions in my life as actions that seek the kingdom of heaven. Mm. So what what would be specific actions that we would say, those are kingdom-seeking actions that are anxiety-reducing behaviors? Yeah, I think let's do some very public, practical ones. Get to church, <laughs> right? Be around the people yeah. of God. That's seeking the kingdom, seeking, um, get around his word. Mm-hmm. Get around having conversations with him. Asking him, what do you want to accomplish, Lord, today? That's an easy, yeah. that's a simple prayer. Yeah. Um, praying for the things that do involve anxiety and saying, Lord, I need you to meet me in these. Yeah. How do, how do I live differently than this reality that I'm in? What choices do I need to make? I think then you get into some deeper realities of choices or living like seeking the kingdom Okay, today I'm going to pick places where I can choose humility. That'd be a harder practice, mm-hmm. longer. That's a you have to be in some other spaces before you can choose that, right? Yeah. I'm going to choose to do some things for the kingdom in secret today. That's another. That's a little harder practice. Um, those are sort of the antidotes. Yeah. What would you say? No, I I, I would have hit many of those. I think it's, you know, and, and just continue to build on that of what are the practices of the kingdom? And they don't immediately seem like anxiety reducing. So gathering with a group of people so you don't feel alone, like you said, mm-hmm. the community to, to worship together. Um, I think we, we, you know, take out a context where two or three are gathered. So I'm also there with you. It's speaking of his unique manifestation when the people of God gather. Mm-hmm. Um, how about this? You're really anxious about money. Go be really generous. Like give it away. Yeah. Go uh, sell out your possessions. Go sell your possessions. How about care for the needs of the poor? Mm-hmm. And as you consider their needs, being generous towards them, she just says, man, thanks for clothing me. Thanks for feeding me. Thanks for visiting me when I was in prison. And everyone's kind of like, wait, what What ministry of the kingdom did we do unto you? Mm-hmm. He says, oh, it's, it's connected to how you've treated people in these positions. Yeah. And so can you point to those positions, those opportunities in your life and say, okay, this is when I chose instead of buying the next thing that I was hoping to satisfy me, I gave it away to meet a tangible need of someone who was unclothed, who was unfed. And you know what? I feel better. Yeah. Like why, why is this? And it's the, you know, it's the regular practice of it. I, I'm haunted by this story that I read years ago, and he doesn't even write this way anymore. He's like a leadership book guy now. But Donald Miller wrote a story in A Million Miles in a Thousand Years, one of his later works about his friend who was there over coffee talking about his daughter was dating this a loser guy and 
he didn't know what to do with his like first you know teen dating days and he was he was just devastated that she would choose such a loser to date right and donna miller's sort of major idea is she's not living a great story so go home and have your family live a better story and then she, because of the story she wants to live, she'll stop dating this loser guy. So the guy goes home, declares, you know, in front of the family meeting without consulting the wife. We're going to get involved in orphanages in, in this country. And we're going to do this, you know. And his wife, like, we are. <laughs> like, I didn't know. <laughs> we're going to talk about this. And it ended up a few years later, like, the family came around something bigger than themselves, a story bigger than themselves. And, of course, the girl stop dating the loser boyfriend because she was like, well, you, you're you not living a great story and I want to live a great story and this is helping me, mm -hmm. you know, by doing the orphanage care with my family. And it's just reminding her, like, when we talk about the kingdom of God, choose to live a better story. Like, do you want, when you get your update every week in your phone of your screen time, do you want to waste seven hours of your week on Instagram. Seven hours times 52 times over 70 years. Like, do the math, mm -hmm. you know? There was an interesting study that came out recently that said um, that the average teenager will spend 25 years of their life on their phone. So yeah, Wait, wait, that can't be real. So You said the average teenager. Right now, by the time they die... We'll spend about 25 gotcha. years. Okay. I was on, like, wait, on the they're front. only 17 years old. How'd they yeah. spend 25 years? Of, anyway. They'll spend about roughly around 25 years on their phone. You're like, that's a lot of your life. Like, do you want that yeah. story? I got to do the math on that. Yeah, but it's that, super interesting. He did it in dots. I'll, yeah. I'll send it to you. It's yeah, really yeah. interesting. He talked about bed, sleep, how much you'll spend in sleep, yeah. work, just daily activities, and then how much they're projected if their rate of what they're doing now yeah. continues. I think that'd be the question is, okay, so where do you find the source of your anxiety? I'm scrolling, I'm envious, I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm getting nervous about my own life. Okay, well, that just seems like an anxiety-inducing activity. Yeah. Let's, let's eliminate that from my life. Like you're saying, let's, let's, let's push pause on that. Yeah. So what are the activities that don't? Seek the kingdom of heaven. Why is that anxiety-reducing? Is because the kingdom of heaven is secure, certain, unshakable, it's where Jesus says, moth and rust do not destroy. Right. They, they can't access your inheritance. Right. And so because it's so secure, it begins to secure my soul because yeah. my treasure is secure, because the one I trust has secured it. And so all of a sudden, oh, man, the way in which I view life becomes a little bit less anxious, right. which I think leads to that last question you brought up. What do you think about tomorrow? Yeah. And today's troubles are enough for today. I love what it said. I, what, I, can't, I don't have the text in front of me. Uh, I have it right here. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. That right there is like tomorrow is already anxious for itself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like you don't have to be anxious for it. If, oftentimes I find that I'm, when, I'm, when I'm most anxious, you know what I'm trying to do ultimately? Control tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a weird thing. It's like I know I have no control over this event or what's going to happen in 10 years. And so because I feel so out of control, I feel like the only way I get to participate in any form is to at least be anxious about it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, that's right. And then I love what he says. How, how has being anxious added a single hour to your life? Meaning, okay, so you've been anxious about it because if I'm not anxious about it, nobody's anxious about it. And right. someone should at least be anxious about it, right? Shouldn't we at least be anxious about this issue that we can't control? And he's like, how is that working for you? Has that added longevity to your life? And I love that Jesus asks that 2,000 years ago, and then our modern health society is like, hey, do you know what really kills you? <laughs> <laughs> Anxiety. Like it destroys you, you. It destroys you. Yeah. This, will, this will kill your physical health. Yeah. Is anxiousness. This will age you faster than totally. smoking. And so it's just, you know, I love, you know what's fun pictures to look at are presidential pictures of when they start oh, and end goodness. terms. That's so interesting. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, it is so interesting. Tells like, you the weight of that <laughs> job. I'm sure it's like, holy cow, what <laughs> are we doing? Yeah. So there, there, there's a physical manifestation of the weights and concerns and troubles of the world. Yeah. And Jesus says, how's that going? 
Is that adding? Is that adding longevity? Is that adding quality? No. Why are you doing it? 